and thank you to everyone who's come. Uh, we know that your feet are probably tired and there's not, uh, not enough chairs, but we appreciate you standing in the threshold, and we promise we'll make it worth it for you. Um, like David said, my name's Lauren. I work for Frame Magazine, an Amsterdam-based spatial design platform. Where I'm head of digital, I oversee the online content. And uh, we're very happy to be here today with the four of you and uh, later more. And uh, today we'll be talking about two things. First panel discussion will all be about earning success in today's design market, not just for emerging designers, but also established designers, to understand what the opportunities and challenges are. So my first question for you is, who are you? Um, yeah, my name is Rick Tegelaar, and in my work I really focus on developing new um, aesthetic or functional qualities for existing materials and techniques. So um, often it's a lot about uh, like doing a small tweak or gesture to a material that gives it a whole new uh, appearance or perspective, basically. Uh, and I think, uh, especially here, that's very visible where um, projects have a very similar approach, but a very different outcome. So, um, yeah, for me, the presentation is about the pieces, but also a lot about the way of working. Um, so, yeah. Hi, I'm Umut. I have a studio based in London. My background is in uh, architecture, so I've gone from architecture to objects, lighting, um, and I'm really interested in sort of spatial objects, spatial lighting, and how you can sort of create things that respond to the space and the user. So that's sort of, I guess, key to my exploration. Okay, hi, my name is Jesse Visser. I'm based in uh, Amsterdam, and I, uh, I work for brands, uh, for furniture and lighting. And also in this presentation, I uh, present the limited and high-end uh, editions, and then I work with galleries and architects. And uh, a lot of my work, then uh, I try to engage all the all the senses, and that you are uh, physically involved, and that there is an interaction uh, with the product. So uh, <clears throat> I am Alexandra Gatza. As thanks, thank you for. Uh, as first, I want to say thank you for inviting because uh, I don't have the exposition here. Uh, but I am a textile designer. I am uh, based in Delft in the Netherlands and uh, I design innovative uh, textiles uh, on, uh, and textiles products on intersection of art design and architecture. Uh, and I, am focus, I focus on weaving. I am really fascinated about this technology and see a lot of uh, possibilities uh, and potential in uh, creating uh, the three-dimensional constructions, that's uh, three-dimensional weaves. Thank you so much. So I think it's nice with today's discussion um, about success and earning success as a designer to start from the contextual and go to the more actionable so that everyone leaves feeling like they've, they've got something bigger and something smaller to take with them. I'd like to ask, in your eyes, what really distinguishes the design industry of today from the design industry 10 years ago, to understand the opportunities and the challenges. Okay. <laughs> now, what what is uh, changed? I think is that you need to be an uh, expert in 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 everything. Actually, <laughs> so uh, you need to be a specialist in uh, uh, social media, in engineering, in designing, in uh, developing, in in sales, and that could, could be quite hard because uh, I think the solution is to. Well, to work a lot and to uh, together with other uh, companies and uh, other uh, specialists, that you still can focus on yeah your main goal and your team and uh, yeah what you like to to tell as a as a designer. Uh, I think I think for me um, something that's interesting that's changed over time in the industry is just how it's possible to scale as a small studio that you know just with uh, digital technology that you can do lots of things in house so actually you don't necessarily need lots of other people or partners and there's lots of potential within that for small studios or designers to produce their own pieces market their own pieces like you're saying that the fact that you can do everything you know, if you can do a bit of everything, you, you, you have a big platform to get things out there. And I think that's quite a nice 
that's quite a nice opportunity at the same time. Yeah, I feel like also the way we can or have to present our work has really changed. So I feel a bit old when I think about 10 years ago, but um, uh, as I remember, like my, my first Dutch design week was like my first proper show after graduating. And um, yeah, I just put my stuff there and um, didn't do anything uh, in terms of PR or, or stuff like that. And um, that's also because I was younger and naive, but uh, also now we almost tend to think of presentations with the uh, images in mind. So you, you sort of really need to have that um, sort of communication power now, I think. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, it, it, get, it gets really harder and harder to get your foot in the door, uh, uh, I think, with, with, with good outlets. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but maybe yeah. you want to uh, yes, for sure. I, I think also that uh, also because of everything goes so quickly in the developing of uh, uh, in the digital uh, world, actually, uh, that uh, there are still more there are more possibilities coming uh, on, on different ways. Everything goes much faster. And, and yeah, I, I'm now busy like more than 25 years. So I see also not only 10 years ago, but 25 years ago was totally different. What even was they were the beginning of the to, to having the computers and and uh, now they are uh, I actually you need to have more skills and to develop the more skills if you, you are working. Uh, um, as a designer, and you 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 like to, uh, to 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 put your creativity in communication also to 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 showing your work. So, yeah, this uh, it takes more. Uh, it needs more time for everything. It's interesting because earlier Yasa and I we spoke about how it's it's good to be good at a lot of things, but also you need to be specific at a certain point and, and understand what your strengths are and really um, touch on those and work with partners who also are really specialized in their own field. So maybe you can share a bit more about that idea. and. Well, yeah, it's also, uh, I, I work a lot with different techniques and then you cannot be a specialist in, in metal and in wood and in weaving and so, uh, and if you if, if details are really really important, like in, in my work, uh, then it's really good to to create a network with craftsmen, with uh, factories who can do really <laughs> good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because I, I don't have a workshop my own, so I'm a lot. I had it in the past, but uh, I thought okay, other people can do those things better than I do. So, so uh, if you work with a lot of different materials, then I think it's necessary. And, uh, but this is also that you, uh, you see new uh, solutions, because if you are collaborating with those factories, you see what their technique is, and you are getting new inspiration. So that's a really nice, for me, it's a nice way uh, of working. Oh, OK. You might, yeah. I, yeah, I was just going to just sort of following on from that, I think there's something really interesting about not knowing too much about everything and sort of approaching things in quite a sort of a childlike way which can sometimes open up you know new ways of doing things you know if you if you sometimes if you know too much you know you, it sort of closes down closes down the possibilities so uh, it's like sort of architects architects tend to know a lot uh, about lots of different things but no, tend to know not very much about lots of different things. You know, so it's a bit like that. I think that's quite, it's quite interesting. No one wants to carry around an encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's interesting to think about designer as a jack of all trades, one who can do not just the the creation of the product themselves, but also the marketing to bring this network of people together. And I think that, you know, even what we've seen editorially, you, you see designers doing just this, but. Do you think that that role is a healthy one? Do you think that it makes sense even to strive for, to be good at so many different things? Well, uh, it's actually one of the things I really love about my job, that I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. So uh, I get to do a lot of different stuff and learn a lot that way. Um, so it's actually something I try to to embrace a little bit as well. So um, 
uh, now we're having this lovely discussion, but uh, two, three days ago we were um, here building the show and uh, carrying stuff. So it's kind of like, and I feel the same way that um, uh, in one meeting you're with the owner of a company talking about the collaboration and in the next meeting you're in a factory talking to two craftsmen or who who are developing your products and that's kind of that's this constant change of uh what you're doing what language you're speaking uh that's what keeps it really exciting for me so i think a word that most of us here should be familiar with by now because it's so prominent in design today is co-creation you know and another role that you can add to that that long portfolio of designers now is the mediator and the the facilitator of co-creation um how do you think the rise of co-creation has, has affected design practice in the industry itself? Can I quickly, uh, I think I've never not co-created. So uh, our projects are really about collaboration and we really like, like what we're doing with Wool & Wire now. It's really about opening up, collaborating and finding each other's strengths. I think that's super exciting and um, uh, yeah, for, for my work, it's vital because, yeah, like you said, Umut, I know uh, very little about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And that sort of curiosity, I think that really helps. But then you also need to find the right people to sort of um, multiply that, I guess. Yeah, and I guess finding people that sort of share the curiosity and that are sort of open to experimenting sort of in, in different ways with their processes, like with the, your wool and wire project. I think that's quite, yeah. I think collaboration is really, uh, is a really sort of rich sort of territory and sort of really important, like for our work with the, with the Vibia project, so with the string lights, I've been sort of working with string for maybe six years. And that project, there's a sort of a simplicity to the form, but actually technically, super complicated to do something that behaves in that way where every thread looks exactly the same and is tensioned um, and with that particular project you you know we really needed a partner uh, and working with Vibio found the right partner to really invest in that technical development and sort of make it happen yeah, it depends also, I think, where, where the start is. Um, sometimes I'm, uh, I have the same, that, that you developed something on your own and you are looking for factories and company and brands to, to collaborate with. But uh, I think for me that the most successful commercial pieces started before that, actually. So that you are in negotiation with a company, there's not a specific product yet. They know the market, you look at their collection, You think with them, what does the collection, uh, collection uh, need, what can, which value uh, can I add to it? And then you are really uh, developing new items together and that are, I think, the most uh, successful pieces. How difficult is it to find these right partners? Hard. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it, yeah, it depends. Uh, presentations that are really uh, helpful, like this, and that you uh, have, we all bring our own uh, network. Uh, you need to be visible, uh, but also you need to be very proactive. So <laughs> you need to reach out to a lot of different companies and try and uh, to make an appointment. And you have stuff uh, to talk about, but then. Uh, the result is totally another project. So you have to start somewhere and then it's developing, I think. And yeah, for me to add to that, for me, the, the personal connection is also super important. So to have, have a good click with who you're working with is for me is like, uh, that's where it starts. So like with the boys from Wool & Wire, we were at Barbasso till late last night. <laughs> And that, yeah, it sounds random, but to me, it's very important. It makes you feel like you can be yourself and you feel uh, that at ease. So, and that also helps when you need to express yourself in a creative way. So that, to me, is like, and also with, with Moy, who have been work, working with for seven years, I think, you get to know everyone, you feel comfortable, um, you're, and it gets easier to share ideas. And, um, yeah, I think that's that's something that's, um, easy to overlook. 
Okay, so you have the skill, you have the idea, you have the self-awareness, you have the partner, you have the resources, hopefully. But how do you ultimately balance creative vision with commercial interest? Making something that's authentic to who you are as a designer, but can also sell and can be interesting to brands. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for that they do not exclude each other. So something that's a, a creative success, uh, I think is, is has a lot of potential to become a commercial success. So, and um, I think a lot of uh, uh, established designers are actually also really good businessmen or women. So, um, I, and I think in business, uh, creativity can also really help. Uh, so you can think of new constructions or solutions for stuff that's on the table because we're just really used to um, open thinking and I think that kind of delayed gratification of putting in the work, you know, and I think if you um, have to solve a business problem, then you can also really, you can design things that, you know, so um, I always try to think like that when I have, uh, when I want to sort of develop something or have to solve something with you guys feel the same or yeah similar i think you don't always know what's going to be successful yeah and i guess sometimes it feels like if you're driven by that that maybe then you're not always well for me anyway following just what seems instinctive to to do or sort of going with your gut um so that's a little bit the sort of dichotomy those two things and i guess it's what what's the measure of success anyway is a commercial success a success or is it you know having some sort of truth to what you're doing or sort of meaning or so i think somehow it's like for me it's a bit of a gray a gray area and sort of less 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 defined but i think certainly in some cases it feels like just when you do when i just do what i believe in just what i'm interested in and follow that that sometimes it comes to sort of a commercial outcome um, but but not always. So it's sort of a, a slightly risky approach, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and sometimes you need to to explain also to the to the brands eh, how how you are working because uh, also what what I'm doing I'm working for quite high end uh, 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 industry like the, for for gallery pieces or unique pieces, but also have uh, really commercial pieces that are really low in the market. And uh, in the beginning, people thought, oh, now you, you really need to choose. And now that's, that's not a good idea that you work with that company. But I think if you have a clear, clear vision and if your concepts are right, and, and I think it's really, really interesting to, uh, to, to change your, uh, your idea into a, a product where you can reach more people and not a few uh, people who can afford it. So, um, but then it, it's hard to, to, uh, to, well, it's not hard, it's interesting to uh, see where you uh, can do concessions or maybe add value because it's not just an idea. No, it's a pr product that you can, uh, can use and that people can afford. I hope no one thought that we would get through this panel without talking about sustainability. And here we are at the sustainability question. Right? You have creativity and you have to be commercially interesting, but today it's so important to also be sustainable with what you do. That's a huge measure of success, at least from the way it frames sees it. And uh, yeah, how, how do you incorporate this as a third pillar in your practice? <clears throat> well, um, for me, um, we try to do as much as possible, uh, as in um, when we uh, develop the, the illuminated screens, for instance, we have, we try to work with, uh, uh, with materials that are bio-based and biodegradable uh, or materials that uh, really maintain their value. So that's why we use a lot of brass too. It's also a nice material to, to, to machine. Uh, so that's also why, why I love it and it's very rich but it also holds its value really well. And in the construction where we particularly chose to use connections uh, that are, uh, you're able to disassemble. So uh, when that point comes uh, that it's the end of the life of the, of the, um, of the piece, it's easy to, um, like to repurpose the materials. And there are actually very little different materials in it. So we, I do try to 
um, make conscious decisions at least, uh, even if it's not like the main focus of the studio to like develop um, uh, uh, sort of uh, um, sustainable projects. And it has actually also become uh, something that we um, try to encourage our, the brands we work with to produce locally, for instance, or to use um, like high-end materials. Um, so we try to not use or, or as little plastics as possible. So I think actually as a designer, you do have a lot of um, impact on that. Mm -hmm. As long as you have your... Um, yeah, you also need to sort of maybe develop the confidence to 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 um, demand that from your collaborators. I think. Do you find yourself in that position often of the advocate? Well, yeah, more and more because if if it's your, if you have your breakthrough um, thing like um, I had with Moy, uh, and and maybe was it for you the same or? Yeah. You, I think you feel like you're less in a position to demand stuff you know you're just really glad it's 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 happening so and now i'm a bit less dependent on like each um collaboration so then you you feel a bit more confident to sort of hold your uh position right your values yeah, yeah. you can yeah. start to yeah. yeah i think um yeah rick put it really well i guess it's sort of it's it's a subconscious uh thing that's happening that we're all aware of uh the sustainability aspect of the practice i think as well as sort of the choice of materials the taking it being able to take everything apart i think there's also just how making things that last sort of trying to make pieces that are timeless both in terms of sort of stylistically but also sort of physically i think it's a it's sort of an angle that i take on it um, and then really I guess as a, as a designer and being sort of quite self-critical person anyway, it's just really thinking about why something needs to exist mm -hmm. and if it needs to exist, if it's bringing something else to the, to the plate, you know, to the, to the space that doesn't, isn't already there, you know, if it's sort of like a meaningful piece. And I think that's a, that's a sustainable sort of approach in some ways of being really sure that something needs to exist because there's so much stuff I think it's interesting because everything that you've said so far really compiles an insightful guide for emerging designers, right? Things to take in mind and things to learn from and things to pay attention for. Um, but I think uh, discussed earlier, you know, sometimes as, a, as an established designer, maybe you get in a rut, you get in a, in a usual way of doing things. And how do you get out of that? Yeah, I think I, I, think I often... Yeah, get get stuck in a rut, and I think that's just part of life. That you sort of, uh, you know, you have a routine of living. You know, you have certain places that you go to. If you have a family, there's certain routine, and I think there's something there's something lovely about that. Um, but it is really easy to just get absorbed into a cycle of doing things in the same way, whether that's work or life. And actually, I think it's moments like this where suddenly you step out, or you have a really intense activity like doing a marathon or putting up an exhibition <laughs> uh, and then you just suddenly like uh, you just have that sort of um, view of something slightly from the outside so I think it's often just changing the context that really just helps shuffle everything around I think for me anyway I think um, yeah for me for me too it's like uh, uh, it is like uh, like you know, like a, a going on, going on, and working every day, and uh, trying to um, uh, to to combine uh, both like the commercial and and creative work, and uh, but then when you have an exhibition and uh, and you are you are outside your studio and you are you are in different uh, kind of setting uh, and meeting other people, you are like just stepping out. And uh, yeah, and then you have like a new uh, um, insights. You get uh, new insights and, and uh, about your work, and uh, and you can look from from the distance. And uh, it is in my in my way, in my uh, uh, for me like this. I get this feeling after this conversation that designers need to take some kind of personality test. You know, before <laughs> before they start their practice, right? To understand the role that they, they thrive in, the roles that they have potential in. 
and to really um, kind of uncover their potential and their, their ability to um, achieve and define their own success. Um, as an editor, I really love one-word exercises because I like getting to the heart of things. So I'm going to ask the very cliche, but um, probably to be expected question of what's your one word for how you define success as a, as a designer today? Can I, you just use one word? Or? One word. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, well, okay, I'm going to be a bit rogue and say a couple words. For me, like, uh, <laughs> no, but... Uh, this, uh, this, uh, to also to to like pin it down to what we're doing here. This has been such a great experience that we we kind of knew each other and um, had a sort of shared ambition and really uh, just went for it. And to to really see like the 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 level of trust we had in each other and and respect for each other's work or. Uh, ambitions to show here that for me was like a really beautiful experience and that I would say that to me is success to be able to be part of these kind of things and to find this sort of um, yeah recognition from your peers in in design for me that's like the main drive so if if I who would we see each other once every year maybe <laughs> and then I really enjoy Umut's work, and then if Umut comes to me and say, "Wow, this is really," then uh, that's that's for me is like uh, the, what it's about. And um, so there's more than one word, but what's a good word for that? Trust, yeah. right? Oh, maybe trust. Yeah. Is this, yeah, self trust and uh, trust in yeah. others. I think it's really. But I appreciate the explanation. It was needed. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm going to go a bit cheesy. I'm going to say <laughs> fluidity. <laughs> that's, that's opposite from so solid. We're yeah, solidified, I right? I feel like, so it's, like we were talking before about sort of uh, getting stuck in a rut. Yeah. And I feel like there are moments where you're, you feel more fluid. It feels like there's like a flow to life. And you're sort of just a passenger on this journey. And like that's how this exhibition came about. It was like very fluid. You know, Ruben got in touch, and then Rick was involved, and then we didn't know each other, then we met, and it was all just very fluid and organic. And there was a moment where we, and I, and I think being open to that was just really important, and there was a moment where we kind of got it all together. And it just felt like, it's a rush, it, it felt like a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say, um, yeah, I would say fluid, fluidity. Three words, <laughs> belief. <laughs> Trust, uh, and what was the second, uh, uh, the third? Well, it's actually uh, the second because trust was already used. Yeah, okay, so. okay. Uh, oh no, oh, no en energy. My work is about energy, but also uh, I think this col uh, collaboration is uh, a lot about energy. And uh, they are all uh, energetic, uh, working really hard. Uh, and I think there we, we end. That's the point where we find each other, we respect each other's uh, work. But if you look for uh, for new uh, uh, or students that are not just graduated, I think it's most important that you really, really believe in what you are doing and not listen too much what people think, or uh, and that you also work uh, with people like this, where or companies where you believe in and where you like to be part of. And then, uh, well, if you put all those energy together, then it's going like boom. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that, that, that's really nice. Yeah, so yeah, uh, exactly the energy but, and, and belief, belief in yourself, follow, uh, trust to what you are doing, but also find some balance. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, uh, very important, uh, uh, the balance in, uh, between your work and, uh, and yourself. And, uh, uh, and then when you have that, comes everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then comes everything. So I think this is very important. The other words they were used, so I cannot use it. But <laughs> no, but it, it, it will, creates uh, a nice composition. But yeah, mm -hmm. but that's a nice uh, process. Yes. Yeah. Balance. Balance, yeah. yeah. Balance, yeah. Okay, well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'd like to take a moment also to see if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask. I'll take five or 10 minutes for that. And then we'll have a brief intermezzo before we go into the next panel discussion.
So I was wondering, I studied architecture, I became a manager, and there were some like experiences, meetings, things that I that made me decide that uh, I didn't want to become an architect, but do something else. So I was wondering what made you decide to become a designer or to stay a designer? Yeah, for me, I was also always making the stuff. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I was m more like uh, busy always with creating clothes. So I want to be first the fashion designer. And for me, the, the actually when I start uh, studying fashion designer, and then I discovered that actually the main thing that is that is the basic for me is textiles. So uh, then I, I yeah I start weaving, and then I discover that uh, uh, yeah I get so fascinated that uh, actually it came just very natural that I I uh, I start weave and I wanted to follow the the movement of the weaving machine, and then now I'm doing that <laughs> still following this movement, yeah. Yeah, well, for me, it's, it's a, a natural uh, urge to, to create things, just actually to, to, to be happy. <laughs> and in the, in the past, it was, uh, or I be, wanted to be a cyclist, <laughs> or going into the, to the design. But it's, it's really, uh, uh, that, well, I had an accident, so that made, made it easier. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, also from my childhood, it's just creating, because I, I, I can't do... I can't live without, actually. So it's also that you, yeah, it's what you feel, actually. Yeah. It's a disease. <laughs> it's a disease. <laughs> it's a good disease. Yeah. 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 So I think for me, uh, uh, I used to do a lot of painting, uh, and then and then I saw these images of Zaha Hadid's uh, fire station, the paintings of that fire station. So I thought, okay, paintings and architecture related. So. So then I studied architecture at a sort of very sort of arts-based school, didn't design any buildings. And then I sort of, from there, sort of evolved into, I guess, spatial objects, which sort of architects, for architectural ideas, um, but uh, are sort of not buildings, if you like. Thank you so much for being here and for showing us your wonderful work and sharing it with the world, and for your insights, of course. And if you have a moment to uh, do a round afterwards, please. Uh, please do. Um, otherwise, I mean, this is just this is just the cherry on a much larger Sunday. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.